Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter the master of hoppets today checking out some more Swedish craft beer a little surprise summer beer mail from Joan he sent me a couple cans of Fermentarana IPA that he wanted me to check out and he said please check these out as soon as you can because they're quite fresh uh, and just because it's IPAs you shouldn't let them sit for too long so I actually got the package today I put them in the fridge when I got home and here in the evening, I was like, okay, let's crack them and see how they are. Because one of them, I think, was from June-ish, late June, something like that. Uh, it should be all right. There's no, is there any dates on the cans? There's a best before. So this, I'm guessing this is from the 10th of uh, July. And this is from the 10th of June. So not dead fresh, at least this one, but it should be still all right. We're, that's like around two months. So that should be all right. Uh, you know, it can be too much with all that. Hey, I guess it has to be crazy fresh. Two months, it's still gonna be a tasty beer. But again, four weeks is probably prime. So he sent me a can of this cool look. I mean, both both cans have amazing artwork. It's even, be even better than it was in the beginning. But it's a can of Urban and a can of Oat Cream Baker. Urban is a double dry hopped single IPA and Oat Cream Baker is a double dry hopped double IPA with oat cream, but also a little bit of lactose. And both beers have wheat malt, barley malts, and oats. So I think we should start with the single IPAs first with a red squirrel skateboarding. I love that. That's a dope label. It's, I love how the artwork on the, their can has gotten so much more detailed than the early ones. It, it looks a bit more pro. And then I love the look of white cans with gold tops. It looks great. So uh, this one is, as I said, I, uh, Hazy IPA. It's double dry hop, and it features Simcoe, Mosaic, Mosaic Cryo, and Simcoe Cryo. And by the looks of this, it looks like this is gonna be IPAs that I'll really love because I love really bright hop-centric IPAs. And by the looks of it, that's what I kind of expect. It's got that verdant kind of look to it, actually. It's not as milky and crazy as something like Monkish, which I keep on repping and talking about because I'm a huge fanboy of that brewery and they make some of my favorite hazy hoppy beers. But it looks, it really looks like Verdant. And from here, it kind of smells similar. So yeah, it's a golden yellow hazy looking color. It almost looks like cloudy lemonade. Uh, and then a nice white head. Let's check out the aroma. Yeah, it's, it definitely smells like, you know, lemony citrus, which is quite interesting. I, I was expecting more dankness actually. It has an interesting like creamy hop thing. Like almost like, I, I don't know if that's like, just, cause this one doesn't have lactose, but it's, it's almost like, like creamy citrus. Like there's like a, I think it's just a super high level of oats that's giving off that like sweet creaminess. And then with hops, it's just running as creamy hops, but it's not per se like really dank or anything, which I, I kind of hoped because it's like Mosaic Cryo and Simcoe Cryo and all this. Like it's got a decent amount of hop aroma, but it's not like bursting out of the glass. And I th yeah, this was about four weeks now, right? Urban, so it smells good. It's mostly like that lemony thing and then a little bit of Mosaic blueberry, nothing crazy, but it's definitely like zesty and lemony and bright and pithy and citrusy, which is, which is what I really enjoy. Maybe a touch of bright tropical, but not a lot. For me, it's mostly like citrus. And then, uh, yeah, a little bit of a generic kind of juicy estery profile underneath. It smells pretty good. It's very verdant-like, and it smells like crushable beer, which is awesome. In terms of ABV, I failed to mention that. It's 6.5%. Let's give it a taste. Thanks a ton, Johan. Mmm. Surprisingly crushable. It has a little bit of a gritty kind of thing. It could be high chloride levels uh, in the water profile. Like a gritty, like I find like almost like chalky. Like often with loads of chloride in these IPAs, you get like a kind of a chalky feel to it. It's not too much, but there's a little bit of it. But it's a pretty good IPA. It's very verdant like. Uh, that's for sure. Or maybe, um, uh, Dea, like they're not super saturated IPAs. It's like that. There's definitely some juiciness to it, but it's a, it's a soft juiciness. It's kind of like, you know, undertones of, 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 of juicy, 
I'd say stone fruits mostly, mo no, mostly, <laughs> mostly and mainly together. Um, stone fruits mostly or mainly, um, but there is a little bit of just like a generic juicy fruity profile that's not like too distinguishable. Like you can't like exactly say it's like this and this. But to me, it's mostly stone fruit. But then again, the aroma was more like pithy lemon and lime and and and, and this kind of citrus pith. with a little bit of mosaic blueberry, but it's more like fleshy citrus on the flavor, not so much pithy. There's some of some pithiness on the back end and a good sweetness, but it finishes dry, which is what I want. Like this is definitely something I could crush. Um, it, it, yeah, the only thing is like, it has a little bit of a gritty, chalky feel to it, but I don't think it's too bad. It's not something where it kind of ruins the drinking experience. This is like, this is about IPA with a good amount of flavor, but also high drinkability. You know, it's definitely something that's fairly easy to drink. But for being double dry hopped, I don't feel like it's crazy saturated. Often when you see those, you know, labels slurred out there, but double dry hop doesn't necessarily mean it's huge saturation of hops. It mainly just means that probably you have a fermentation dry hop and you dry hop again after, which is very common in the style of beer. But it's really good. It kind of reminds me, also a bit like Steve Barry, it's at least some of the stuff that they've been producing for in cans as of late. A lot of the stuff I haven't really reviewed. It's a good IPA and it's a nice kind of like, you could say everyday, everyday if, if there's such a thing, but a, a beer you could definitely have every day. It's something that's not overly saturated and just like a crusher really. Really, again, I think Dea's kind of pales, light pales and burdens and stuff like that. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, nice. I think this might be the first IPA review from these guys as well. But let's jump on to the double dry hopped oat cream IPA, oat cream baker. I love this label with the crocodile as a baker. <laughs> That's amazing. So um, this is 8%. Not a lot of head on this one. But it also looks like the saturation of hops on this is much higher because if you just look at the beer in the glass, it looks, it has like that, almost like <laughs> hop milk, hop cum, as Joe says, look to it. Not crazily, but you can just see there's such, I think it's lupulin powder among other things in suspension in the beer. And there's a good amount of it. So this is Galaxy Idaho 7 Mosaic and Citra. And usually lactose in IPAs is not my favorite thing, but we'll see about this one. Cause, and as long as it's not sweet, it's fine. But let's check it out. Ooh, it's really herby. I didn't expect that. Oh yeah, it's herby. It's a little bit dank, but not crazy, but I'm definitely, definitely getting like fresh herbs and then, yeah, like basil or something like that. And then it's like a classic grapefruit vibe to it as well. And then Galaxy is not like crazy intense, but there's a little bit of melon, but there's also definitely a little bit of earthiness. Which kind of classic Galaxy vibes. I'm even picking up grapefruit. And Mosaic is definitely also there. There's that kind of blueberry, very wide. Idaho 7 is one of those hops I haven't worked too much with, but I feel like that also sometimes gives off a bit of like earthiness in one of this, uh, this Galaxy. It smells pretty good though. It definitely smells more saturated, almost like gasoline, like Nelson sometimes. Does, you know, Nelson can sometimes go a bit gasoline. Let's take it out. Cheers. Thanks, Sean. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely gasoline. -y. You know, it's it's interesting because it has like it's it's dank, but it's really restrained dankness. Like I prefer that like sweaty, heavy. It's weird. I know a lot of people is like, oh, how can you like, no, I don't want that in my IPAs. I think it's just because I missed it and I missed the West Coast because the haze is like the only thing everyone does almost nowadays. This is really good haze though. And it's towards what I want. Like it's dry. This is the big thing with this, it's dry. It's not sweet, overly sweet. It finishes dry, slightly, you know, maybe not bitter. I think it's just like, like a hop thing, like just a saturation of hop in terms of flavor. Galaxy plays in with a bit of juicy fruit and over it totally screams verdant beer, really. Like ultra crushable uh, double IPAs and, then, and like single IPAs and whatnot. And I wonder if they use verdant yeast, the dry yeast. I'm not sure, but it could also be uh, maybe L London Fog from White Labs or something like that. 
maybe even London Ale 3. Just treat it differently so it's not like crazy fruity because that can go really fruity in terms of yeast character. But yeah, um, yeah, interesting. I didn't expect exactly this kind of like combination of flavors, but let's give it another go here. Sweet, juicy profile up front, which is really nice, but it's not overly sweet. As I said, it's dry. It's kind of like melony. It's that classic galaxy melon uh, character to it with a bit of earthiness and peppery spice, but it's not a lot. And then there's a, some dankness, but again, restrained dankness. And then there's classic sweet citrus from Citra as well, more so on the flavor. Also that kind of like with the grapefruit vibe and a bit of mosaic kind of blueberry notes, but you know, there's definitely some earthiness and it's not like, there's a little bit of a generic tropic vibe, but it's not like crazy tropical. It's more like, the, the melon thing from Galaxy that really stand, stands out along with like citrus fruit. And again, it does also have a little bit of a lemony thing as the other one. But I think I definitely, even though, you know, this must have been quite impactful actually when it was just released, it being two months now. But uh, this is actually a really good double IPA. Really good actually. Again, it's it very much reminds me of what Verdant, Verdant does. Mm. Yeah, um, I prefer this one a little bit, but I'm not like totally floored. I think this is really good as like a, you know, just like, a, a, again, it's almost like everyday IPA. Got a bit of pineapple on that sip there. You could drink quite a lot of this. It's really good. 90, straight 90, really nice hazy IPA. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much, what, if you want these lighter, uh, still like, you know, creamy and velvety, both are like quite creamy and velvety beers, but they finish dry. So if you want like the dry New England IPAs, but with fruitiness and not like just crazy, just all over the place over ripeness, but a good balance, this is for you. And in terms of this, 91, 92, this is like a really good double IPA. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. It's quite saturated, but again, it's not so much that it's scraping your palate out, which is awesome. It's that kind of verted balance thing, which is great. So mm, very tasty, very tasty. Not half bad. So thanks a ton, Yohan. You demand for supplying these. I'm also surprised how this is not too sweet because uh, there is some, there's definitely more sweetness, but it's not too sweet. It's finishing dry, but actually the more I'm drinking it, I do feel a slight bite sitting on the tongue. Interestingly, more so than the triple IPA from Monkish, which was more saturated, but that was also sweeter. And I think sometimes the sweetness in these new IPAs can help uh, cover up some of that bite. Man, I've been doing long reviews as of late. Sorry guys. We'll try and keep them shorter again, but these are very nice, very, very much worth a visit if you want to try some nice beer from Gothenburg in Sweden. So, have you guys had a chance to try either uh, Urban or Oat Cream Baker from Fementerana in Sweden in Gothenburg? Let me know what you thought of them. Thanks a ton to you for the beers. You're the man, dude. We still have quite a few awesome beers from you to get through, mainly some cellarable stuff that's sitting in the cellar, but we'll check them out soon enough. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, remember to check out the Facebook fan page, Twitter, and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos as well. And I want to say cheers in uh, Oat Cream Biker. We'll see you guys in another video.